Let's start with the preferences. The first thing I do when working in a fresh install of Katia is to make the following changes. I start by activating gravitational effects during navigation so that when I rotate around a model, it's constrained to the Z axis. The second thing I do is I go down and I display all elements using the Z buffer. Uh, that way wireframe geometry is hidden by surfaces and not visible through them. I'll also modify the widget layout section to make sure that new widgets aren't created inside a new tab. I'll deactivate zooming on the tree if you click on a branch because I find that I accidentally click branches too often and it can be distracting zooming in and out of the tree when you're trying to model. Uh, display values and display formulas are important so that those things are visible and findable in the tree. I'll also change my design range to large range because it's more fitting and performance is better when working in large building or infrastructure models. I'll leave my units to millimeters because that's a personal preference. Uh, make sure external references, constraints, parameters, and relations are visible in the tree. That's essential. And also make sure that you keep link with selected object when you are uh, creating external references. Finally, I'll create an axis system and create a geometrical set when creating new 3D shapes so that everything is ready in a 3D shape to start modeling when I create a new part. Working in Katia, you need to be able to build and navigate scalable product structures. This can be a slow and tedious process that has to be done at the beginning of every new project. That's why in 23XFTO1, we're delivering a new command to generate a product structure automatically from an Excel spreadsheet. Start by creating a site, then be sure that you're working in the Building and Civil Assemblies application. You change applications in the upper left of the screen, behind the compass. The command to create a construction mockup from a document is located in the BIM tab. Launching the command will allow you to either search the database for a spreadsheet that's been uploaded previously, or upload a new spreadsheet from your hard drive. You then select which sheet from the spreadsheet you'd like to display, and Katia will give you a preview of the product structure, and you can select or deselect different parts or products that you would like to create from the spreadsheet. When you click OK, Katia will automatically generate the parts and products that was specified in the spreadsheet and visualized in the preview. This command will allow you to easily standardize a product structure and create a new project template that can be reused at the outset of every new project. At the outset of any new project, it's safe to assume that there are reference models that you'd like to insert and use as a context for your modeling. In this case, I have a site that's already been created and I'm going to right click on my reference model and insert existing product. It will search the database and automatically insert that site into my reference model site. You can see inside this model, there are a couple of design models that were generated in X generative design. Uh, and these are different design studies that we'll use as a reference in modeling a more detailed project. So in this case, it's design model one that we're going to use as a reference. And we're gonna start modeling this project using the new building design and engineering features that have been released in the building 3D design application. And we're going to take this concept design to a higher level of resolution using the Katia building design functionality. Let's make this geometry non-pickable so that it doesn't highlight when I mouse over it in future steps. The concept model from X Generative Design had a set of planes that acted as level planes when creating the concept model, but I'm gonna make a new set of level planes that will act as a driver set of planes for the entirety of my new, more detailed, more robust design model. The Building 3D Design application has a number of ways to create levels. What I'm gonna do here is make them by parameters. I'm gonna set the number of levels I want to make the story height, the distance between levels, slab thickness, and ceiling height, because the levels command is going to generate not just a set of planes at the top of slab, but it also, it's also going to create planes at the bottom of slab, the ceiling height, and the finished floor level. 
I can edit the levels at any time by double clicking on the level set and it gives me a table view that I can modify if I like. I can also open this in Excel and make modifications in my Excel spreadsheet. For example, changing the name. I can also change any of the values that define the elevation, the slab thickness, floor thickness, or ceiling height. And that will automatically set, be returned back to Katia and make modifications in the table view. By clicking OK, I'm going to commit any changes and they are visible then in the tree. The levels are a driver that need to be shared across the entirety of your model. Rather than move them from shape to shape using external references plane by plane, there's a new quick distribute shortcut that will allow you to easily move the entire set of planes from one 3D shape to another with the click of a button. I want to insert a 2D drawing into my model that will act as my building grid. In order to do this, I need to insert a document into the tree so that I can easily access it later to make that 2D view. The Manage Documents command allows you to import and embed any project-related document, whether it's a PDF, a project specification, or a DXF or DWG, into your product structure. These documents are accessible then from the Product Explorer applications on the web. So if you need to upload a new document from your hard drive, you can navigate your Windows Explorer. If you make the wrong selection, as is the case here, you can remove the document and upload a new document at any time. Now in this case, I have my grid DXF and I can insert it into my model. Now that the document has been uploaded to the database, I can insert that drawing into my model. I'll start by searching the database for that document as a reference document in my model. There's the DXF, and now I can create a 2D view that will be inserted into my 3D model. When I select that document, I can decide which plane I want to put the drawing on, and I can control the scale and positioning of the drawing that's going to be placed in the 3D model by moving these little white circles and snapping them to reference geometry inside my drawing. In this case, I know grid line one and grid line two want to be snapped to a few points that I've already created inside my 3D model. So I'll drag the view into the approximate location and then I can grab the same white circles in my 3D model and snap them to the points that I previously created and click OK. This will create a layout inside my model that I can reference now in later steps. With my 2D layout in place, I can extract the geometry from this layout that can be used then for further modeling operations. By launching the command, I have the Extract Geometry dialog box. I can select the geometry that I want to extract. By default, it's going to give me polyhedral geometry, but I can toggle that to create exact geometry. And what that will do is, for example, if I have some circles that are imported as polylines, converting them to exact geometry, it will recognize if a polyhedral line is close to a circle and it will automatically create that geometry as a circle for me.